G'day everyone and welcome back to the Warthog Project. This is my homemade A10C flight simulator. Um, for those who haven't seen it before, feel free to have a look around the YouTube channel or check out the link in the description to my website, which is thewarthogproject.com. Today's video is a bit of a technical one. We're gonna be discussing how I made the new floodlights. There is a couple of different lighting systems in the cockpit and all of them, just like in the real jet, work off the lighting control panel down here. Um, so the console brightness is the backlighting in the actual panels themselves, you can see there. And the flood lighting, what we're talking about today, is the general sort of lighting around the whole cockpit. You can see them right there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of little flood lights littered all around the cockpit. Uh, today's video is going to be explaining how I made those. So all of the lighting is run by the same 12 volt power supply in here and all of them are also on relays. If in the game you lose electrical power, you will also lose electrical power to everything in the cockpit. Um, for example, if I flick off the two jennies, you can see all the lighting died on me. Uh, and then when I flick the two jennies back on, everything comes back to life and all the lighting as well. Uh, and I've wired it up so the emergency flood switch, just like in the real jet, will bypass everything and go straight from the battery. So even if you've got no electrical power, you flick the emergency flood and all of the flood lighting will come on full brightness, as you can see. All right, so now we'll go into the garage and I'll show you how I made these things. I better turn those back on. Okay, so this is what I was using and still am using for the flood lighting around the cockpit. Uh, it's sold on eBay as a number plate light for cars, so it's 12 volts, two little SMDs, these ones are green, and in a nice little aluminium housing there. Uh, I chose these because they're easily directionable, like the um, the real ones in the real jet. So this is what I was originally using in sort of version one. All I did was bend up this simple aluminium bracket. So you could screw that to the side of the cockpit and then just loosen that bolt, angle it where you needed it, and tighten the bolt back up. Uh, it did the job pretty well. Problem is because there's no cover sort of pointing the light, you get a lot of flood and you end up lighting up everything that you can see rather than having sort of a spotlight. So that's what I was using. Uh, the new version that I've 3D printed, you can see that here. So that is based off photos I found of the real one. However, I made a lot of the measurements up. So they're absolutely not 100% replicas. Um, I sort of just did it by photos that I had and by eye. Uh, you can see that it's got a shroud, uh, it's got a, a main sort of body section which the number plate light, I'll show you in a second, bolts into. Then it has a, a mount so you can mount it to the side of the cockpit. This mount I ended up changing only because it just wasn't strong enough uh, due to the nature of 3D printing and, and where it's mounted in the cockpit. Uh, I could tell that if I just bumped it, it would collapse on me. Alright, so th these are all the bits. This is the shroud that uh, is based off the Grimes model you can see that i did include the model number on the real one but i haven't um made it prominent because i noticed on all the photos of the ones i found online it sort of looked like that i think it's cast it's not perfect but uh all i do is i spray it with filler sand it and then paint it so it doesn't need to be perfect it's only one small little thing so that's the shroud this is the main body of it again i, I printed this out of silver filament and the paint didn't sort of go around the whole thing but it doesn't matter because none of that is visible um all you do is you get the Motorcycle number plate mount, the uh, cable fits through. I've got DuPont connectors on the end there so it connects to the, the wiring loom and then that hole is large enough that it just screws in. Uh, so that is basically the body of it and then the shroud just press fits over the top like that. And then this piece of um, green plastic that's laser cut uh, is just press fits in there. Uh, there is holes drilled in there for the metal shroud that goes over the top of it. It's like a, a shroud that angles the light where you need it. Um, I haven't found any photos of that on the A10. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna add that, but I'm just gonna put some small screws in there to hold that bit of glass in place. Uh, and I'm only, I think I'm only gonna put the, the bit of glass on the ones where it's actually visible because all of these are angled down away from you. So you can't actually see it. So that's basically the Grimes light. Uh, this is the original mounting system that I came up with. You could see that it sort of just goes on like this. And then that's how it mounts. I could, I could tell that it's a, ma a massive weak point in there because of the nature of 3D printing. Uh, so I decided to not use this mounting system. It's much more realistic to have it like that, but I, I decided against that. What I ended up doing was removing that altogether 
and then I just made a whole bunch of these. All I did was get some aluminium elf profile, drill some holes, sand them, cut them, and I, I ended up with a whole bunch of mounts that look like that. Uh, and then that goes on there. And then I used a section of this, but not that thing, just this bit here. So I, I 3D printed a whole bunch of these. And this bit here just clips over the top. You get some small screws to bolt them together and it just gets held on by friction. So once you've got it in the right spot, you sort of push them together, tighten those bolts and it won't move. It, it will be able to be adjustable like the real one is, but it won't move if you bump it and it'll keep it nice, nice and steady. And I chose to just use one hole in that. So once I've got it mounted, I can angle it where I want it and then tighten, tighten it up. All up there is eight of these in the cockpit, four on each side of the canopy frame and then four sort of up the front pointing at the main instrument panel. There's also two of these larger floodlights. Uh, again, I got the designs off this one from photos I found online. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any sort of dimensions or scales or anything. I based it just um, on what I needed. So there's two of these in the cockpit now. I'm considering putting another two in because in the real jet, there's four in the cockpit. Um, two of them sort of get mounted on the rear of the canopy frame up behind the ejection seat, sort of over your shoulder. But my my cockpit's cut off there so technically i probably shouldn't put them on there but i might I'm, I'm i'm considering printing another couple and actually mounting them to the seat just because it's cool uh, i 3d printed these and ended up with what you see right here okay so this is the basic design of the spotlight uh you can see that's sort of the mounting setup you can see there's a square in there and i just used one of these bolts with the square um, end to fit in there and then a nut to hold it in place this is the main body. It's hollow in the middle because I originally designed it to fit one of these little cheap torches that you get from every sort of dollar store. It was They're like $2 each. Uh, so I designed it um, to fit in like that. I was going to use the lens. I was just going to take the battery unit off, cut that and mount it in there. Uh, and it would have been sort of a pretty cool spotlight. I decided against that because this runs on AA batteries, which means it's not 12 volts. And it was just going to be too much of a hassle to solder it all up. I left it like that because it prints very easily on the bed like that and then i could design and print a module that fits in there so you can change it to any sort of lighting system that you want really and i'll show you that in a second so you can see that that's um indented in there so that bit of green plastic goes in there the mount goes on like that and then the shroud sits on top and then these bolts go through so that's sort of how the whole thing is held together. I'll put it together now. So that's basically how it gets mounted together. Um, you can see that the green glass in there, even if you use the spotlight, does a pretty good job of turning it green. To design the actual light in there, I ended up using these. These are from eBay. They're just bulb holders for a normal T10 wedge bulb that goes in a car. And I, I managed to find these LED ones here that actually have their own lens in there and some super bright LEDs. So I use these because this, they're 12 volts already. It's really, really simple to wire them up to, to my lighting loom and these dim as well. So all, all I did was print a very quick adapter that slides in there like that. Um, there's no need to hold it in place because it gets held in place with the end cap, which is just a press fit on it. Um, so all you do is ignore this one. It's a bit melted because I tried to, I experimented with putting a bit of um, shiny vinyl in there and I headed, I went too far with the heat gun, which melted it. Um, I'll print a better one later if I get around to it. So that just pops in there. Your light goes in the bulb holder. That slides in. Um, the one in the cockpit I've cut off and then soldered up a better black cable. But then like the real one, the cable just goes through that hole and then the whole thing gets stuck together like this and then this goes around to the cockpit. And that's how it works. Uh, the beauty of that is to change bulbs, you just pull it out back rearwards without having to unbolt the whole thing and take it all apart just to change a bulb. Um, these ones are actually white. I've got some green ones coming to see the difference. I've also got some much brighter ones coming to see the distance. And I bought a whole bunch from AliExpress of different types just to see how they end up. But so far, this is the best one. And once it's in there, it um, is very green and it almost matches the small ones perfectly. So the mounting system, uh, I just built this bracket here. Uh, 
3D printed, uh, not perfect, but it doesn't need to be because you can't see the damn thing anyway. Uh, and that just gets bolted on uh, like this. Uh, sorry, this way. And then you can see how I've made it so you can adjust it up and down. And because it's twisted like that, you can adjust it that way as well. So basically, those are the two different types of spotlight that I've made for this. And what I'll do now is I'll show you what they look like in the cockpit and working. All right, so here I am in the room. Everything's turned off except for the flood lighting, just so you can see the individual flood lighting and how it works um, and how it looks. So I'm not really sure how good it's going to look on the camera, but you can see that because the flood lighting has those little covers on it and is sort of directional, um, there's not much spill anywhere else on the cockpit. It's sort of aimed directly at the instruments. Um, if I grab one here, so here's one of the small ones. If I grab that and move it, you can see how it is pretty directional because of that cover on it. Uh, it's almost perfect. I w and again, I just I just winged the dimensions, but um, it's basically the width of the console and mounting in the position, which again, I winged, seemed to make it the perfect distance to make it that w width. So there's one there. There's another one here pointed at this sort of bunch of instruments there. Uh, and then there is one here pointed down there. And there is one here that's pointed at the main instruments. And then these ones here, which I don't know if you can see that they're on, that's those large floodlights. They sort of just point over the whole thing and offer a little bit of illumination on that. The only stuff in here that is not really realistic is the footwell lighting. So I, I put those little number plate lights in the footwell under there. You can still see them, ignore the cable mess. That's not realistic. The real A10 doesn't have lighting down there, but but I do live in Australia, so if you feel an insect crawling on your feet, it's a good idea to flick the emergency flood and see what the hell it is. And all of that flood lighting is what is dimmable on the normal circuit when the sim's turned on because of that relay. It won't actually work without the sim and the jet powered up, but the emergency flood bypasses all of that, so turn that off and everything's dead. Uh, all these panels are on only because it's got fog volt USB power if the game was actually running everything would be completely dark because the um, relays would trip and DCS bias would be telling it that there's no power to any of these but anyway because the game's not running that's why it's got power and then you flick the emergency floodlight and everything comes up full brightness and then because I've got the relay on when I turn the console back lighting on all the console lighting comes on as well looks pretty cool I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Uh, thanks heaps for watching the video. As always, the STLs to print all this stuff will be free in the description. Um, I'm also going to put them on Thingiverse, so hopefully by the time this goes live, they'll be free to download there. I'll eventually put all my 3D files on Thingiverse as well. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Also, make sure you check out my website, thewarthogproject.com, and thanks heaps for watching.